Um, Samantha? Thank you, Kate. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good evening to some of you and good afternoon. Uh, again, thank you for joining today's OWASP webinar. Um, as Kate mentioned today, we're just going to be focusing on the OWASP projects as a lot of people in the community have expressed kind of an interest in learning about what's been happening um, with the division of OWASP. Um, so I'll kind of start off today by just kind of briefly going through the outline and the scope of the presentation and um, I'll kind of follow that with a brief introduction on who I am. I'm sure most of you know, but um, I'll do that anyway, just in case we have some unique visitors, visitors rather that have gone or joined the webinar today. Um, I'll talk about what my role is at OWASP and also where we are today with Global OWASP projects. And as Kate mentioned as well, where we're going to be and where we're headed. Okay, so um, this is the outline for today's webinar. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'll just give people a brief description of who I am and what my role is. Um, and I'll just follow that with the demo of the new project's webpage. And I'll kind of just go into why I feel it's really important to move forward or why the GPC and I felt it was really important to move forward with developing a new project's webpage. Um, why we felt that the redesign and the reorganization was necessary. Um, and after we do the projects page demo, I'll kind of go into the discussion on the new projects handbook for 2013. I'll show you where you can find that information, the first draft of it, and how you can kind of help us make it better for all the project leaders. Um, so after we look at the handbook, I'll briefly present the OWASP project infrastructure. Now that was going to take a bit more time because there's a lot of details going on there. Um, I'll discuss what we've what we've had before in, in terms of a project infrastructure and why we felt that it was important to update it and why it wasn't working essentially uh, for global projects and for all of our project leaders. Um, and lastly, we'll just kind of discuss how to leverage the OWASP initiatives infrastructure to kind of just benefit your project and other project leaders, um, how you can help, uh, like I said, current project leaders with their workload and how you can volunteer for different initiatives. I'll also show you where you can find this information. I know Kate has mentioned it and presented it before in the other webinars, but I just felt it was important to reiterate that point. Um, and this will be followed by kind of a 10 to 15 minute uh, question and discussion um, session, if you will. I'm hoping that I'll get through all of the information in time, so please do stop me if I'm rushing through anything that you want more information on. I'll be more than happy to answer questions. So now, just uh, a little bit about the scope of the presentation. Like I said, each focal point in this webinar um, was really a project in itself. Um, so there are lots of details that can be discussed uh, for each one of them. So just to give you an example, a uh, previous presentation that I created for the GC GPC that only focused on the project's infrastructure, it was about an hour long presentation. Um, so my goal today is just to briefly introduce each of these points um, and I just want to promote discussion really and to get some feedback from people in the community that I hope will kind of generate ideas and support that will at the end of the day ultimately benefit all of OWASP Global Projects and the project leaders. So with that in mind, let's move forward with the presentation. Hi. I'm Samantha Groves. I'm sure, like I said, most of you know. Um, I'm the OWASP project manager. Uh, just a little personal information, other than London, the UK, but I will be moving to Belgium come February. So please do keep that in mind if you're ever contacting me. It's GNT plus one, I believe. Um, what I do at OWASP. Well, I'm sure a lot of you know that a lot of us staff or the staff does quite a bit for the OWASP Foundation, but essentially in a nutshell, what I'm responsible for is developing and managing the global projects infrastructure, which is really kind of like the innovation and research division of the organization. I technically manage 124 global projects and I manage 124 global projects teams, um, essentially ensuring that they all have what they need to be successful, both within the OWASP community and outside of that. I also am responsible for grant research writing and fundraising. And I do directly manage the projects that have been awarded grant funds and these, as these initiatives have deadlines rather associated to them. So we feel it's really important that those 
have a little bit of extra attention since we do, like I said, have a deadline that's outside of the control of the organization. Of course, we do put it in the proposal how long we feel it'll take, but we still have to meet those deadlines in a very high quality way. Uh, my objectives for the OWASP projects in general have been to really focus on consolidating all of the projects related information, update all relevant, relevant documentation, kind of develop as close as possible as we can get an accurate list of our active projects because we know there was a lot of information there to kind of consolidate and get updated, especially a matching accurate project leader information with the project themselves. Um, another big goal was to finish the 2013 project handbook and to design the project's infrastructure as well. That kind of helps all of our project leaders uh, leverage the OWASP Foundation in general, instead of hindering them really. Um, and one of our goals was to raise 150,000 American dollars in funds for the organization as well and for projects. And just to let you know, we have been working on all of that for the past six months. Our project metadata I'm happy to say is up to date as up to date as it's ever been before I believe um, our documentation is as up to date as well um, you can see that in the demos ahead that I'm going to show you on the new projects page and the projects handbook is complete as well so we're very happy about that because that took quite a bit of time and a team effort really with the GPC and myself to put that together and finish it off and we've also managed to raise 145,000 American dollars in grant money for the foundation thus far, so we're quite happy about that. Um, we are currently at a stage where these initiatives have been updated and kind of developed and they're ready for launch. But please do keep in mind that all of these initiatives are not set in stone. I just want to, to um, focus a little bit on that. Um, there is always room for improvement. I think that's a really important point to mention as well. And all the areas, in all of the areas that I'm going to talk about today, I really do encourage all project leaders to test each of them out and to provide feedback on how we can make things better for you and the rest of the project leaders as well. Okay, so let's move on to the projects page. This is the current OWASP projects page. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen it, but again, I'm just putting a screenshot on here for those of you in case we have new people joining. Um, I think most of us can agree that while the current OWASP projects page has come a long way since the launch many years ago, and I have gone through the history and looked at how, what first, how it first started and the different evolution, the stages of evolution it's gone through and it, and it has had an amazing evolution. I must say it is currently in dire need of a revamp. Um, by revamp, I mean kind of a general audit of the information that's presented on the projects page, updating of that information and organizing it in a way that kind of makes sense and is easy for project leaders to use and understand and easy to find information in general. Uh, this is the, what, like I said, what the current project page looks like. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just kind of in paragraph format. Um, but the information is kind of scattered and hard to find and I did get a lot of comments on on that that all the information just wasn't easily and readily available and people were having trouble just locating different pages. You know, something as simple as just putting, you know, making something bigger, just people weren't finding this information. It was hard for them. Um, I'll put a link in the chat window once we're done, just in case you haven't seen the project space, but I'm pretty sure most of you have. And this is uh, another part of the projects page, actually. This is the middle part, if you will. There's three parts to it. It's organized in three different ways. There's the paragraph section. There's the this section that has tabs that are separated into stable quality beta, alpha, and inactive projects. Um, and the bottom part that's more kind of, of a general list of all OWASP projects. Um, each, like I said, it's organized in a very different way. I think this was a really amazing way of organizing projects in the past, but unfortunately all of the information was outdated. Um, like I said, the below tab structure was just a massive list and as most of you know, it's slightly visually unappealing and doesn't really represent an accurate account of all of our projects, unfortunately. And now moving on to the new OWASP projects page. Due to the issues that I kind of uh, spoke about just now, um, we began working on the new projects page in late 2012. 
Um, this is a small screenshot of the new projects page. I'll demo it in a little bit so you can kind of go through the links and have a look at each section. Um, it is live on the wiki page, we just haven't replaced the link on the OWASP navigator bar. Um, as you can see, most of the information that was on the original page, I don't know actually if you can read it, but like again, I'll show you when we demo it, is still present on the page. Um, it's just been either organized in a different way, updated, or categorized differently. So the project pages. Um, again, I'll show you this in the demo and I'll go through each page so you can look at it in more detail. Uh, you'll find everything from how to start a new project, marketing materials that are aimed for projects, and up-to-date project inventory that's separated um, by flagship incubator and lab stages, um, project assessment criteria, events, my PM reports, the weekly reports and board reports, um, and even projects terminology dictionary. And I'll explain what that is more in detail later on. I'll also show you more in detail um, the different areas and forms that we've kind of created. So you can pretty much ask the organization anything you need. There's the contact us form and there's also forms for starting a project, but I'll go into more detail when I demo it, which is now. Oh, oops. So this is the projects page. A lot of hard work went into this and a lot of contributors as well. So thank you very much to everyone that contributed to this. So as you can see, we have the welcome page and it has a link to the project's handbook, uh, the project inventories as well. There's a call to action to contact us. There's announcements, donation links projects of the month, which is SAP currently, and a link to the initiatives page, which I'll go through in more detail later on when we get to the initiatives section. The starting a new projects tab, it has project recommendations, different information on starting your project, information, I'm sorry, uh, license recommendations that Justin Searle and Jim Manico kindly put together for us. And you'll also find links to all of the forms that we have in the project's infrastructure, like I mentioned before, down here. And they're really here just to help you make queries and start processes. For example, we have the donation, you know, this is how to donate a project, how to adopt a project, how to start a project, if you want to transition, if you want to review, everything's there. Now moving on to the project assessment tab. This tab has information on all the project stages, on the OS project lifecycle. It explains everything in detail, different types of reviews available, how to start a process, um, how to start a review. And it also has the review criteria that we grade you on. So I thought it was very important to put that information in there so people knew what it was that they were expecting when you went through it, a review process and what you need to do to get there essentially. Now the project's inventory, as I mentioned before, it was uh, separated by flagship labs and incubators. And we also have a list of inactive projects in case anybody wants to donate any or yes, adopt any of them, I'm sorry. And that's a complete up-to-date list based on the records that we have in Salesforce as well. And I update that regularly weekly. And so moving on to the marketing tab, this has information on our brand and logo usage, what you can and you can't do with the OWASP visual identity with the logos with all of our files. Um, it also, the page also has different marketing materials that you can download, such as flyers, banners, presentations, logo files. You can also submit a merchandise request. The link is right there. Yeah. So moving on to the terminology page, the terminology tab is essentially a list of definitions that are associated with OWASP projects. Um, I know internally we use a lot of words and phrases that might not be very apparent to other people outside of the community and even sometimes within the community. So I thought it was really important to put one together so we can all be on the same page. And I think it's a really easy way for other people to get caught up or people outside the community to get caught up with our lingo, if you will. 
Uh, so sponsorships and donations. Um, here people can donate either funds, tools, platforms, etc. to OWASP projects. They can create new projects and just download something that they've done before. Um, the OWASP sponsorship sponsor section below, excuse me, is uh, really reserved for organizations that provide sponsorship to OWASP projects specifically. Like I said, it can be in the form of other platforms, tools, uh, projects, or funds. Uh, so please do contact me if you are interested in sponsoring projects. We are more than willing to have a conversation about that. Now moving on to the Project Press Center. Um, this is where you can find all of our links to our social media accounts, podcasts as you can see run by Jim Manico, and um, the tutorial series run by Jerry Hoff as well. And you can also find global announcements here as well. And we will update that more regularly once this is launched. So the PM tab, here is where you can find more information on who I am. So you'll know who you're dealing with. You can attach a name to your face and what I am currently working on and my quarterly objectives. And here you can also find all of my reports that I've ever done for the foundation and the board meeting reports as well. And like I said, also the quarterly objectives and how to contact me directly as well. So Global Projects Committee, uh, here you can find information on the GPC, short bios on each person. And the contact us form is where you can get in touch with anyone in the GPC or myself directly. And there's our quick look through the projects page. Now we'll go back to the presentation really quick. So how you can help us with the projects page. Um, there's a lot of ways you can contribute and help us out with this. I have reached out to the community for feedback and for suggestions on this page. The board and several members of the community have uh, gotten back to me with some really amazing feedback. Um, just, I just wanted to let them know if they were on the call, rest assured I have not set your, Simon, your, your comments or suggestions aside. They will be implemented before the launch. Um, but I do urge all project leaders to test the web page out to report any inconsistencies or errors to me. Um, and please do let me know what you would like to see added. Um, I'm hoping the launch date for this will be next week, the end of January. Um, but please do keep in mind, like I said before, that this will be an ever-changing page. And even if your piece or feedback or suggestion isn't implemented before the launch, it doesn't mean that it will never be. And that's the new project page. So now moving on to the projects handbook. This one is going to be a little bit shorter of a demo because it's really just looking at documentation. So the projects handbook. Um, this was originally developed by the GPC. And it was created in order to help project leaders learn how to leverage the OWAS project infrastructure. Excuse me. Um, the 2012 project handbook was, I believe, never officially launched, as far as I understand, but please do correct me if I'm wrong, GPC, if you're on the call. Um, the new version that I will demo for you, it was put together by both the members of the GPC and uh, the Global Projects Committee and myself. We, just to kind of give you a bit of background on what we've been doing, we've been working weekly on it for the past six months. We only just stopped having weekly meetings to update this. Um, to complete the handbook for a 2013 launch. So I just want to say thank you very much to the authors, Justin Searle, Jason Lee, Keith Turpin, Nisha Kumar, Chris Schmidt, and Brad Causey for dedicating loads of time to help with this initiative. We really greatly appreciate all you've done. Um, so moving on to the updates, aside from the spell checking, the link management, um, and updating the processes and the review information, um, we've updated or kind of given a bit more of description to the the project stages and the project um, benefits essentially so it's been a lot of just filling in the details if you will of a lot of the areas that were already in the 2012 handbook um, the new things so what's new um, we've added an appendix and this includes author bios it includes the OWASP code of ethics 
the project donation contract, which Sarah kindly helped us put together, um, recommended licenses, which, like I said, Justin Searle and Jim Manico helped put together, a uh, brief history and a description of each, and the revamped uh, project reviews um, section. Um, we also added more criteria and logistics information in that section specifically. Right, so let's quickly have a look at the handbook. So this is the working document. And again, I just want to thank the authors for helping us put this together. Oh my goodness, excuse me. <laughs> like I said, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, table of contents, acknowledgements, overview. Please do let me know uh, during the discussion section if you want to look at anything specifically. I'll keep this page open um, so we can discuss anything in greater detail. And I'll actually put a link to this. Oh my gosh. Sorry, guys. To this document, and I'll put a link in the chat window as well to the test page, just in case you want to have a look at those while I'm presenting. More than welcome to. Okay, so this is the project's handbook. I do encourage people to have a look at it, have a read, and let me know if there's any information in there that you'd want to see um, added, or if you just need more information on what a particular area is. We'll be more than happy to, to have a conversation about that. So just to conclude this section, like I said, it was a pretty short one. It was just showing you where the project handbook is and what we kind of needed done. Um, you can find the handbook, a link to it rather, on the chat window or in a link to the welcome page in the project's uh, test page. Um, and here's a link to the test page again, and it's also in the chat window. Um, please, like I said, do have a read of the document and let us know if you want more information on any particular section, as I've mentioned. I only ask the only rule that you please use the comments function when adding your comments to the document. It's just easier for me to track them that way and to make sure that nobody's changed anything. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, and if you need help using the comments section, just reach out to me, let me know, and I'll teach you. Um, we're also planning to launch this at the end of January with the launch of the projects page, so next week. And that concludes the project handbook demo. Okay, so now moving on to the project's infrastructure. Okay. So the project's infrastructure, this one is a bit of a doozy. I suppose I just want to start by touching on this point and describing what I mean by the project's infrastructure. It's a kind of a terminology that we uh, use internally. I'm sure other companies and organizations use it as well, but I wanted to make clear what I meant by that so we can all be on the same page. Uh, the term refers to essentially every process, the review criteria, the health criteria, stages, the benefits, the grants, everything that falls within the scope of managing OWAS projects. Uh, I, like I said, I feel it's really important just to mention that so we're all on the same page and we all know what this word actually means and what we're talking about. So what we have now, again, I think it's important to point out the reasons the GPC and I felt it was important to update and streamline the project's infrastructure. The current infrastructure we have in place had some major issues associated with it as soon as we did our audit. Um, most important of all is that the information was outdated and incomplete, and that just was not going to do. I mean, it wasn't helping anyone to have it outdated because people were looking for it and they were getting frustrated with finding this information and not having accurate information, as, as most people would, it's understandable. We also have uh, project health rating levels and a system that are a bit convoluted. And while I can see the evolution of that from assessment criteria one to two, um, it wasn't an end-to-end -end solution for project health rating or for release rating either. Um, so we decided to kind of fill in the details of that and separate those out a little bit more. So it was just 
easier to understand for everyone and people could meet their needs far more easily. Um, we also have, like I said, inconsistent project information and there's no real clear way of managing community needs. Um, this was a very important one since we only have a handful of staff to manage the needs of all OWAS community members. One of the examples, this is why we did the processes, how do I adopt a project? I ran into that problem, I think, the first week that I was, uh, I was at OWASP, and there was no process. Nobody really knew what to do, how to do it, so we created one to solve that problem, and the same with all other community needs. So just to discuss again why it isn't working, I think by now it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the, there is lack of consistent operational infrastructure. That's a big one. Um, this leads to, of course, frustration, like I spoke about before, and eventually the members start to leave. And we did lo lose a few project leaders because they were just so frustrated uh, the first month that I was here um, with the processes. Nobody knew what to do or how to do anything. Um, and then they start to lose trust in OWASP projects, which in turn means they lose trust in OWASP. And that has other negative consequences for the organization. Of course, we'll start losing membership. Uh, the same can be said about, like I said, the convoluted health rating system and the incomplete review criteria and processes. That's a very big frustration for members of the community as well. So now to our solutions. So the project processes we've developed, again, that's the forms and the way of doing things and the rules associated with doing different things such as project adoption or starting a project or donating a project. Um, this is what these were developed for. Um, another solution was the project graduation criteria and this was developed to help move a project from stage to stage, um, from incubator all the way up to flagship in a more streamlined way. The project deliverable review uh, was developed just to make sure that the project is moving in the right direction based on their original roadmap and goals. Um, and the project stage benefit is really a list of benefits that a project receives for remaining committed to the OS principles and values, and also for showing commitment to delivering on their project goals as well. I actually ran into a big problem when a potential project leader came up to me and said, well, what's the benefit of me starting an OWASP project? Why shouldn't I just start it myself? And of course, we all know, all of us OWASP members know why there's, there's so many benefits to being in this community and having all this community, this global community help you out, but it just wasn't listed anywhere. And there was no where we could just kind of point to and say, this is what you get for starting a project at OWASP and the benefits you get for remaining committed to the organization. So we kind of put those together in a very easy to understand way and they are on the new projects webpage as well. So again, just to repeat um, the issues these four solutions solve for the project processes, um, the lack of consistent way to do anything. Now people know where to go to do whatever they need to do and who to ask and they know the rules associated with that and they know how long it'll take and they have somebody that they can speak to consistently about the pro progress of their requests. Uh, the project graduation, um, now it's pretty straightforward. We're still reviewing it. We're still in the testing phase of this actually. It's currently being tested. Um, Jim Manico kindly put his uh, cheat sheets project through the testing phase so we really um, want to thank him for that. Um, same with the project deliverable and release review. Um, it solves the incomplete and confusing review criteria and makes it more consistent and it's actually now related to the project health and graduation um, reviews. And when it comes to the project stage benefits, now people, like I mentioned, have a benefit for starting an OS project and a benefit for remaining within the OS foundation and continuing to contribute and volunteer their time. So how can you help? Well, lots of ways actually. Just to conclude this section, um, I do urge all project leaders to please start using the forms provided once the project page is launched. Um, please do report any errors with the forms, any inconsistencies or issues you can see with any of the review criteria or processes, and please provide feedback. We're looking for a lot of feedback right now because like I said, some of our processes are still testing or in testing. Um, we're open to suggestions, of course. Um, the launch for this is the end of January, along with the projects page and project handbook. 
Um, and please do remember again, and I can't stress this enough, the project's infrastructure is on a continuous improvement cycle. So we are constantly measuring and updating the details to better meet the needs of the community and all of the project leaders globally. Okay, and that is the project's infrastructure in a nutshell. So moving on now to the OWASP initiatives, and I'll briefly touch on these. Excuse me for a second. Mm. So the OWASP Global Initiatives. I know Kate has presented these and or this idea in, in other webinars, but I felt it was really important to just kind of touch on this and how project leaders can leverage this for their OWASP projects and to help other project leaders as well. Um, so the global, OWASP Global Initiatives refers to the method we use to kind of manage internal and volunteer tasks um, by matching really foundation needs and the needs of the community with individuals who wish to contribute and volunteer their time to OWASP. Mm, excuse me. Um, you can either ask the community for help with one of your projects or you can volunteer to help using the volunteer board, which you can see an example of right here. These are two of our current um, call for assistance, if you will, volunteer jobs. And the operations team I know have tested this uh, within our different divisions and we have had some great success, uh, specifically with the call for applicants. I'll just use one of the, the case study that I'm mentioning there, the project support volunteer role. I'll use it as an example. We had almost 17 applicants, I think it was, for this role, and we only needed three people, and most of those were new to OWASP. So I think that was a great success, and just for the call for applicants. And I also just want to uh, let you know that we have chosen the three project support people, and they are working out fantastically. They are amazing, and they are all over the world. I have one in Peru, one in the States, one in the UK and another one from India that's just kind of helping out with, with budget information and they are so attentive. So I'm very happy with how this worked out and how easy it was for them to, to find different ways of contributing to OWASP and just kind of prove that there is, that there are a lot of people out there that are interested in volunteering, they just haven't known how to. Um, and I also just want to stress that this can be used for other divisions of the organization like events, memberships, chapters, etc. It's not just for projects. Okay, so specifically leveraging this for projects. Um, there are several different ways you can do that, of course, uh, like I've mentioned before. Um, you can ask for project assistance, you can ask for project support, like we did for the project support volunteers for the guidebooks. Um, you can do that by submitting a request for help, or you can apply to a current initiative, which I really can. Um, encourage you to, to just look through the list and see where you can help out. And of course, you can also suggest different ideas um, like research or grant opportunities or internships. For example, I just had one gentleman ask me for an internship opportunity. And of course, we have a lot of work that we could use some help with. And this, I think this would be a really great opportunity for him to get some you know, on the job experience. And he can help us out with a lot of our admin duties, especially related to projects. There's a lot of them. Okay, so moving on. Again, how you can help. I do encourage all project leaders to sign up for a current initiative. Um, if you want to get involved, of course, and, and here is the direct link to the volunteers page. I am currently in need, just to let you know, for project reviewers to review the project review criteria. I'm just looking for some feedback on the process. So if you're interested in helping out with that, please do sign up and let me know about your interests. We could really, really use the feedback. And of course, just let us know what you think overall by providing suggestions and comments. They are very much appreciated. And just to conclude the presentation, I know it's been quite a bit of information to take in and we went through it quite quickly. Uh, I just wanted to briefly run through the key points I talked about. Uh, I'm Samantha, hello. For those of you who don't know me or who haven't met me before, I'm the OWASP project manager. Um, if you want to reach me to talk about anything I discussed today, please just contact me directly at samantha.groves.owasp.org or you can use the contact us form on the projects page. 
um, which I've provided a link to in the chat. Um, we briefly discussed, excuse me, the project page and the demos. Um, we demoed the project page, we demoed the project's handbook, and we kind of discussed briefly the project's infrastructure and why we thought it was necessary to have these solutions and implement them in the way that we did. Um, and we also briefly looked um, at the different stage benefits, like I said, part of the infrastructure, and we also looked at the initiatives and how you can leverage that uh, framework or infrastructure rather to benefit your project and to help other project leaders. Again, I do recommend that all project leaders look at each of these and please provide feedback and suggestions. Um, please do think about volunteering to help us develop the project review process too. Um, I've had a handful of volunteers, but I think only three of them have um, responded, so it'd be great if you could sign up for that. I would really appreciate it. And also, here is the link to our different jobs as well. You can follow that link and find the different uh, places you can volunteer, even if it's outside of projects. And again, all of this information will be available on the initiatives page after the presentation. I think the recording as well. And thank you very much for your time today. I think now we can do questions and feedback and comments. Oh, goodness. So I know. Um... Sorry, I wasn't able to see the comments in the chat. That's OK. Um, that was great, Samantha. Thanks a lot. Um, it's obvious to everybody how much work Samantha has been putting into uh, wrangling our project infrastructure and making it better and easier for project leaders and the community at large to participate um, in one of the cornerstones of the OWASP organization. Um, Samantha Collin had a question. Um, he wasn't sure where to provide the feedback on the document. Um, Colin, I've unmuted you if you wanted to restate your question. Hi, Colin. Hello, good afternoon or whatever. Um, you uh, you included the link to the uh, the draft project page, which looked really good. But uh, you asked for feedback. Is there a particular way you prefer to receive that? Just email me directly, samantha.groves at oas.org. Thank you. I'll write it into the chat as well. Oh, this is just organizer. Sorry. Okay, and. Um... So here we go. I've unmuted Dennis. Dennis, and I know he has a lot of questions. Um, they were pretty good. So Dennis, go ahead. Fire right away. Go ahead, Denise. Hi. Hello. This is great. Love the stuff you're doing. Um, on on actually on the um, on the on the, the handbook thing, right? Like what, what I was trying to put on on the question there is that we, we kind of need to move it to a wiki, right? It's probably hard because the, the document looks really good, but in a way, making it into a wiki would make it easier to link and to consume it slowly because it's kind of like a big document. That's an excellent idea, actually. I saw that in the, that the chapter leader handbook had that, and that's a really good idea. So I'll move, definitely move forward to doing that if that's something everybody would like to see. I think yeah. you're right, it'll be really helpful. Well, ideally you should be leveraging the stuff that Dennis Grove is creating where we actually put that stuff on a wiki, right? Oh, sorry, on a Git and then do it from there, but you know. Depends what's easier, right? Uh, on yeah, this yeah, one. agreed, agreed. <laughs> but the problem is those documents, you know, once you make them normal like that, it became very hard to, to manage, right? And to comment. Correct, so, correct. It's great. No, uh, great comment, thing. agreed. So when you mentioned on the internships, right, the, what I was, thought, was thinking is like, it would be really nice to just have a page, right? That you can just point people. Like I was actually presenting at university the other day, right? And it'd be great to just say, look, here's your page that just basically describe what you just described before, right? Like, you know, this is the engagement, this is what we want, this is what you should do. Especially I think for people, students and stuff like that, they'll, they'll want to see something a little bit formal because they probably want to take it to their teacher too, if you see what I mean. Or their supervisors or something. Yeah. yeah, I see what you mean. So what you're suggesting then is perhaps having volunteer the jobs themselves that are related to projects or other divisions in the organization, but then also having something separate for just the internships. Yeah. Do I have that correct? Okay. Yeah. Write that down. The, the only thing I would say is that you, you guys need to create a lot more hyperlinkable resources. Okay. Right? You need to have a much bigger web 
present because it helps to share things out. She helps people to help. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, and you, you, you can't underestimate the power of a page on the OWASP website with somebody's name or some, somebody doing things, right? And I think for those, mm -hmm. for those guys who want to help, that, that will make a big difference. Okay, no, that sounds good. So what would you recommend for us to do that? Just Wikify everything? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think in the medium term, I, I, stuff, I think some of the stuff that Dennis is doing, you know, with um, Dennis Groves, with, with using Git as a version control system and, and creating that into books, into Wikipedia, I think it's a great concept. But I, I think mm -hmm. the wiki is something that works, right? And we're comfortable with. So right, right. Um, I think we should do that, you know, at least for now until, until some, another technology is proven itself. You know right, I mean? right. Agreed. I know this is a cheeky question. Would you be willing to check to, to help out with that? I would. And actually, I was, I was going to say that if you want to help with, the, with that page, right? The, what's it called? The, 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 the test to test page, which is yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the funny name. But uh, you should really be using Wikipedia templates. If you, if I, they're basically to split that into multiple pages. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy to help if you want that. OK. We can touch base then, and we can kind of feed you the different pages and information that we would like to get with Wikified, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done a lot of stuff. I, I, I have a lot of stuff in Wiki. I have a, a lot of old two modules to help with Media Wiki, right? So I'm happy to help. Fantastic, Denise. Thank you. This is Yay, great. one volunteer. <laughs> no, it's all about hyperlinkable stuff. You, you need to spam the mailing list. You, 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 like I said, you have various, you need a lot more presence. Right, okay. you, know, you can spam until they tell you to shut up, which they won't. Right, but um, <laughs> no, it's true. Like you know, like you, 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 especially you, right? You like I just try to find the the history of the stuff you guys been doing. I can't find it, right? And it's, it it mm -hmm. makes it hard to consume. Okay. Right, and don't worry about it. You know, like you know, as long as you're not putting passwords online, the rest is fine. Yes, that's a very good point. Thank you, Denise, also for volunteering to help us out with the wiki page. Yeah. So I, I also want to I want to move O2 platform from the what you guys call it, the labs project into the other one. Mm -hmm. so, oh, fantastic! We can I help you out with that, that as well. I want to go send to me that. an email afterwards. So is, isn't there a, a process already for uh, a project graduation? Is that there is actually? I will I will send you the form. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I want to go to that. I'm happy. I'm happy to be be the test that process. Fantastic. So, Denise, send me an email after the webinar, and I will send you the form and give you instructions on what we I'll need. I'll send you an email if you spam me back saying I shouldn't be contacting you. <laughs> no, 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 I will, I will. I don't have that on anyway. So, yes, send me an email, and I'll send you the information. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you, Denise. All right. Okay, are there any other questions? I can't see the questions. Um, no. There are no other questions, please, if anybody wants to ask anything, now is your chance. Um, if you are a project leader or um, if you know a project leader who wasn't able to attend this morning, please let them know that this is going to be linked to the Global Initiatives page and that um, also this will be repeated again tonight, um, well, tonight for me at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if they didn't have a chance to join, um, definitely the opportunity to review this information is still out there. Agreed. Thank you, Kate. And again, please do remember, uh, a lot of these things are still in the testing phase. So thank you very much, Denise, for, for um, contributing and volunteering to test the, the labs or the graduation process, rather. And please do provide us any feedback or comments or suggestions and questions that you may have, we're more than happy to, to go through them and help you understand anything that isn't uh, self-explanatory and of course help you through any process that you want to go through. So yes, thank you. Um, hold on, I believe there's one more question. <laughs> Siba says, thanks for the initiative. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so that's the end of my presentation. And I suppose if there aren't any more questions, we can end a little bit early. Ooh, that tells me that I could have talked a lot more.
but maybe that's not the best idea. Hold on, Colin has another question. Um, okay, go on, Colin. Colin? Hi, um, I've got Hi. a project at the moment which I'll be trying to get through the, through the existing project review process. So right. far it's almost taken me a year. A year. Um, yes, yes, been, that's one of our problems. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was mainly getting hold of the, the reviewers and so on. Right. Um, but um, I'm hoping that uh, because it's about to be finalised, all the reviewing and so on, that I'm not going to have to start again from scratch on something new just because it's taken so long. Right. Mm. So what would you like to do? Would you like to, to... I suppose all that you'd really need to do to let me know what you've been what you've been doing or what if you filled out a form i'm not sure how you started the process could you give me a bit of background on that it's all on the project pages <laughs> so you've just created project pages for your project the, the, and the, the, yeah the, the, the project exists i created all the review pages um mm -hmm. and uh those forms are partially filled in by three people uh, i see there's another reviewer about to finish something off um, I'm just hoping that we don't have to throw it all away after a year of effort to start again. So what I'm hoping is there's going to be some grace period where project reviews that are currently in progress will still be valid as well. Yes, I definitely agree with that, actually. And I knew that some of them were, were going through that process. So since you put in all of that effort, of course, we would accommodate that. Um, I think the best thing to do with that situation is to please um, contact me afterwards. Because um, I don't believe I have your your contact information, um, Samantha De Grubbs at Orwell again, and we can perhaps set up a call and kind of have a conversation in more detail of what's been going on, of who's done the reviews, and how we can move forward with just um, with that review that you've you know started the process for. I think that's would be the best option for you at this point, and then after that, um, kind of put you through the new infrastructure after you've already gone through your review. So yes, I definitely agree with you. Contact me and we'll get you sorted. Great, thank you. No problem. Any more questions, guys? Denise had a couple more comments, so. Okay, go for it, Denise. Also, Samantha, you can't read the things, the, what's it called, the question? No. Uh, on um, Dennis suggests that uh, we create a mini presentation pack to be presented at OWAS chapters. Um, the force.com link, I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to, um, but I, I get that what you're suggesting is that we put together a package and send that, make sure that the chapter leaders have that so that they can show it at the beginning of every chapter meeting. That's a great idea. I like that too. Were you thinking of perhaps uh, a movie of some sort or is it are you thinking like a pamphlet a booklet i mean what what medium would you are you no, suggesting a, a presentation well a pdf but can that can be presented right and then uh, oh i see you, i see you know the local chapter leader or the local guy just you know goes five ten minutes of it in a way actually it's it's a great channel that you have because you know if you think about it you, you have dozens of chapter meetings i think all over the world every month right so right so just just to let you know, um, and we talked about this at the webinar on the 10th, um, there is in process, um, uh, Jerry Hoff is working to produce a short video on what is OWASP. So we um, need to check in with him, see how that's progressing. But um, yeah, that, that also is in, in process. So we're working on putting together a, a toolbox for chapter leaders to help evangelize um, yeah. Yep. Okay. Any more comments, Denise? I want to apologize to you for being rude last time you met. Oh my God, Denise. Let's talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Denise. I accept your apology. Okay. No problem at all. Um, okay. I think that's it. Uh, no more questions? Fantastic, Samantha. Um, as thank you, Samantha pointed out, um, be sure to check the initiatives page. There's a place to uh, volunteer for posted initiatives. There's a place to ask 
for help with an initiative, there's a place to just say, hey, I've got some spare time and do you need help with X, Y, Z and fill in the blanks. Um, so we're definitely working hard to um, get people involved and get the word out. So I'm asking you as project leaders, if you could contact your peers and let them know that this presentation was awesome. And if they have any questions about the project's infrastructure to please take some time to review this. And if that's it, then we'll sign off. Um, again, this will be at nine o'clock again, and we'll have another series of webinars in the month of February. So topics and suggestions are definitely welcome. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.